I'm taking the same stand that I took in Parliament, both when they introduced the bill and when the debate on the bill happened in the Lok Sabha. And I can tell you, I consider this morally and constitutionally wrong. There is a pure communal message, a dog whistle as they say, a whistle to some people saying your communal agenda is what we are pursuing. I will say to you that I am fully in support of the uh, decision of the, uh, the, the India Alliance's Indian Union Muslim League to go to the Supreme Court against this. It's very petty communal politics. It's a dog whistle to people whose mentality is communal and they want to polarize voters of that stripe. It's not acceptable to us. I am taking the same stand that I took in Parliament, both when they introduced the bill and when the debate on the bill happened in the Lok Sabha. And I can tell you, I consider this morally and constitutionally wrong. Because the basis on which partition occurred was one country saying that religion is the basis of their nationhood and they went off and created Pakistan. And Mahatma Gandhi onwards, all our other leaders, Jawaharlal Nehru, Maulana Azad, Dr. Ambedkar said, no, religion will not be the basis of our nationhood. Our nationhood is about our struggle for freedom was for, for everyone and the constitution and the nation we create will be for everyone. On that basis, we created a constitution which you cannot discriminate against people because of their religion or their caste, their color, their language, whatever. If you're a citizen of India, you have the same rights. This is the first time that into the principle of citizenship, you are finding a law being brought in that actually discriminates by excluding people of one particular faith. The rule is very simple. Anyone who has come to this country before the 20, 31st of December 2014, who has sought refuge in this country uh, from a neighboring country where they fear persecution, is eligible for citizenship. That's all that needed to be in the law. There was no need to specify which religions are eligible uh, and thereby exclude people of only one religion. There is a pure communal message, a dog whistle as they say, a whistle to some people saying your communal agenda is what we are pursuing. That is unacceptable to us. It is clearly timed four years after the passage of the bill just for, the benefit, for their benefit in these elections. And I will say to you that I am fully in support of the uh, decision of the, uh, the, the India Alliance's Indian Union Muslim League to go to the Supreme Court against this. And I must say, if the India Alliance and the Congress Party come to power, we will withdraw this provision of the law beyond any shadow of a doubt. It's going to be in our manifesto. We will not support introducing religion into our citizenship and into our nation's life. This is wrong and we certainly should not tolerate it in the interests of our country. Oh, it's definitely connected to the election, no doubt about that. This is all in order to get a certain polarization of the electorate and to show that Muslims are somehow to be treated differently in our country. And I don't think that's acceptable to those of us who care for India and who are proud of India's unity and India's pluralism. The whole idea about India is that it doesn't matter what your religion is. You can be a good Muslim, a good Bengali and a good Indian all at the same time. The problem is these people don't seem to appreciate that. Here in Kerala, we have a long and respectable tradition of honoring and welcoming people of other faiths. The Jews came here. 500 years before the birth of Christ, they were welcomed. The Christians came here. Muslims came as traders and merchants. We've had everyone welcomed. Everyone has lived harmoniously in coexistence in Kerala. We cannot possibly accept any rule <coughs> that leaves out people of one religion. It's not acceptable to us. The Chief Minister has said that this will not be implemented in the state and we have passed a resolution. Yeah, I, I'm a little puzzled by that because I'm not aware of any pending cases in the state. This is not a matter for the state. It's a matter for the... Home Ministry in the central government. Those who have arrived before 2014 have applied for asylum. They've normally had to go through a very long wait, partially because India does not have a, a refugee and asylum law, which I have been clamoring for for the last 15 years. But anyway, they've been a long wait. Under the CAA, there would be fast-track citizenship for those who've been seeking refuge from neighboring countries. That's a very good principle. Those who are fleeing the neighboring countries, who fear persecution there, on any grounds, should be given asylum in our country. And I would have welcomed this law. But the moment you say people of one religion are excluded, what does that mean? You are basically leaving out people who may also desire to become Indian because of persecution. What about the Taslima Nasreen? What about the Dawood Haider? What about people who have come from Pakistan who may have been born Muslim but who have rejected that country and who have been persecuted in that country? Why should they be left out? 
the whole point is in our country we do not discriminate on the basis of religion. Afghan Muslims have come here. Are we now going to leave them out? What is this? The, what kind of politics is this? It's very petty communal politics. It's a dog whistle to people whose mentality is communal and they want to polarize voters of that stripe. It's not acceptable to us and we have every intention of withdrawing this law in this form uh, as soon as we get elected and come to power.